And now. And welcome to Oakland and the Oakland Alameda County Coliseum with Joe Morgan. This is Dwayne Staffs. Nice to have you with us as the Oakland Athletics play host to the Boston Red Sox. Oakland just completing a lengthy East Coast road trip. They went three and seven and the Red Sox already on the West Coast. They just made the trip up from California. Tim Wakefield will be on the mound for Boston against Steve Wojciechowski in the opening game of the series and there is a potential for some bad blood between these two clubs dating back to last week in Boston when the Red Sox lost Will Cordero on this play. And there are more, there's more than two sides to this story. There's also there's the team side, the Oakland side, the Boston side, then there's the Cordero side and the Williams side because everyone had a different thought in mind. And it's one of those situations that just happens. And I'm not sure there's a right or a wrong, although I'm sure Terry Kennedy had his opinion, has his opinion about it, and so does Art Howe. George Williams, the base runner, and from the Red Sox perspective, they thought at that stage of the game, late in the game, a lopsided score that maybe he went in too hard. The other side of that, Joe, is that the A's say, you got to play the game hard, and the slide looked to be a legitimate slide. We'll take a look at the starting lineup for the Boston Red Sox presented by GMC Sierra. Milt Kyler is going to lead off and play center field. John Valentin at shortstop. Mo Vaughn, last year's MVP at first base. Jose Canseco is the designated hitter. Tim Nehring hits fifth and plays third base. The catcher is Bill Hasselman in left field. Batting seventh is Jose Malave. Troy O'Leary will hit eighth and play right field, and Esteban Beltre is the second baseman batting ninth. Number 20. And there you see Wojciechowski on the mound. 5 and old record. Fastball, curveball, slider, change. He has all the pitches, nothing that overpowers you, but he has pretty good control, and he moves the ball around well. He's just 25 years old, making his eighth start, ninth appearance overall. He's trying to become the first athletics pitcher to win his first six decisions since Dave Stewart did that in 1990. We're set to play ball on a beautiful day in Oakland. And Milt Kyler steps in to lead it off for Boston. And the first pitch of the game is a strike call says Ted Barrett, the plate umpire. Kyler hitting 182. Art Howe managing the Oakland Ball Club in his first year directing the A's. The count is one and one after five years in Houston as the manager. Tyler out in front, one and, and there two. you see the off-speed breaking ball that he throws so well. His changeup is probably his best pitch. There you see the breaking ball down and in. Way out in front was Kyler. He lays off this one as it dips down, and the count goes to two and two. The Red Sox start today running fourth in the American League's Eastern Division. They are 19 and 28. As you know, they had that very slow start, started to turn the corner, but they've been battling injuries all over the place. And the bouncer for Gates at second will make the play to McGuire, and that's the first out. And if you're going to highlight the Oakland A's defensively, you have to start with their shortstop, Mike Bordick. He is one of the best shortstops in the major league, makes all the plays, and they, are, they have a very good overall defense. There's Bordick at shortstop. Some feel that he may be the most unappreciated player not by his teammates, but across the board, perhaps the most underrated player in the American League. John Valentin, the Red Sox shortstop, takes one too low for a ball. And until last year, I think Valentin may have had that mantle because a lot of people felt that he has been a good shortstop for a while, but until he started hitting a lot of home runs, he didn't get noticed. And he drove in 102 runs last year for the Red Sox. 
en route to hitting 27 home runs and a 298 batting average. Back to the mound, and Wojciechowski makes the grab. Flip to McGuire, two up, two down. Normally, when you have a pitcher who does not throw real hard, he ends up in pretty good fielding position. It's your hard throwers that push off that back leg very hard and do not stay in good fielding position. Let's see how he is. See right there, he's in good fielding position, makes the play, and throws to first base. When you have guys falling all over the place, it's when you have a problem as a pitcher when the ball is hit back through the middle. And usually that comes from the hard throwers. Here's Mo Vaughn on the heels of his MVP season a year ago, and he's having another great year. I really believe under the circumstances he's having a better year this year, Dwayne, than he did last year. And it's interesting because he carried this ball club by himself the entire first half last year. He's doing so again this year, but they're not winning. Last year they were winning. Of course, a lot of that could be contributed to Tim Wakefield and some of the other pitchers doing better. And he's one and one. 51 runs batted in for Mo Vaughn already this year. Second in home runs, second in runs batted in. So he and Albert Bell have a pretty good race going, don't they? Yes, they do. One, two in the run production department. And don't forget, Albert Bell is also up there in the batting average. I mean, he's around he's third. And here's a guy that could be leading in the Triple Crown if it wasn't for Alomar hitting 400 <laughs> and uh, Paul O'Neill hitting 379. Counts a ball and two strikes to Vaughn. Base is empty. A couple ground balls out of Kyler and Valentin. And a foul out of play. Holding the count of the ball in two strikes. That was a good example right there of why Mo Vaughn is a good hitter. Wojciechowski dropped down a little bit, tried to sidearm him. Mo Vaughn never moved. Watch his front shoulder does not fly out. Stays right there, right on the pitch. I mean, that's why, you know, he has become such a good hitter. I mean, he does not pull off the pitch nearly as much as he did when he first came up. And you have to remember, this is a left-hander who has a little unorthodox motion as well. And Wojciechowski strikes him out. One, two, three, go the Red Sox. Bottom of the first coming, no score. ESPN's Major League Baseball is brought to you by Olympic. Now get everything you need to protect and beautify your deck from Olympic, America's number one selling stain. No score from Oakland as we go into the bottom of the first with the Athletics coming in to hit. And they will have Alan Battle leading off and playing center field. Battle, Gates, and Giambi for Art House Oakland Ball Club against Tim Wakefield. The knuckleball pitcher, 29 years old. And the first pitch is in there for a strike. Well, Tim Wakefield, the knuckleball is a pitch that if he's if it's dancing properly and dancing in and out of the strike zone, very difficult for not only the hitter to hit, but the catcher to catch or the umpire to make the correct call. Because when that ball is dancing right at the plate, it's very difficult to make a call. The battle fouls it away, and the count is one and two. Wakefield, last year, a 16-game winner. He was... 14 and 1 through his first 17 games since the middle of August last year he's gone 4 and 12 however two and two he finished the year at 16 and eight last year and is two and five through the early stages of this year and a swing and a miss battle will be thrown out Hasselman down to Vaughn to complete the strikeout. The rest of the Oakland light up for GMC Sierra. Gates Number follows eight. battle. Giambi, McGuire, Steinbach, and Munoz, the DH down the middle with Lovello and left. Herrera and Mike Vordick batting ninth to round out the Oakland lineup. Brent Gates, switch hitting second baseman. Takes one too high for a ball. Hitters with the best chance of hitting the knuckleball are usually your guys that have a shorter swing because they don't have to, they can wait a little longer 
and attack the ball. Guys with longer swings have to start pretty much when the ball is halfway to the plate. This one is down, so the count goes to three and on. That's the reason this Oakland lineup looks the way it does with Allen Battle leading off, Lovello in there. When you look at the fellows they have on the bench, Ernie Young, Geronimo Barroa, they've had some problems making contact with that knuckleball. Base is empty, one gone. Gates lines it foul. The only suggestion I've ever tried that works against knuckleball pitchers is actually to move closer to them. And that gives the ball a little less time to break. When I say move closer, move closer in the batter's box and closer to the plate. In fact, I've always felt you should do that against anybody that throws a curveball or a changeup. If you move closer to them on the curveball, it gives it less time to break out of the strike zone. You catch it a little bit before it completes its break. And the same thing with a sinker ball pitcher. Gage drives it into right center field. O'Leary on the run. It's going to be in there for extra bases. Kyler with the pickup, and Gates will stop at second with his 11th double of the year. So Gates has the first hit of the ball game. Well, Gates worked his way into a perfect count, and he found the gap between O'Leary and Kyler out there in right field. And taking a look at the defense, Beltre is playing for Will Cordero at second base. And the original lined up, O'Leary was not in there. Canseco was in. So those are the two additions to this changed lineup for the Boston Red Sox. Here's Jason Giambi. And the pitch to him is upstairs, ball one. With all respect to Mark McGuire, Giambi to this point has been the MVP on this Oakland ball club this year. 25 year old first baseman third baseman moved to third when Brocious went out and McGuire came back. It's interesting Dwayne is that he's actually hit better at third than he did at first. I would think it's just the opposite. Much less mental stress at first base than there is at third base. But he's hit better actually after he's moved to third base. Back to second base. Valentin taking the throw. No, back the back. Boston is not a good defensive ball club. And I would say to myself, why would you try a play like that? Gates is not getting a big lead at second base. You have a chance of throwing the ball into the outfield. I'm not a big fan of trying to pick runners off at second base anyway. Giambi lifts this one high back into center. Kyler is there to make the grab and holding at second Gates. Giambi hit a towering fly ball for the second out. Dwayne, very rarely do you pick anybody off at second base, but quite often you throw the ball into center field. And had that pit, that ball gone into center field, that would have been a sacrifice fly. And you're right about Boston. Last year charged with 120 errors. This year they've committed 49. And they've committed more errors than any other team in the league. And here's Mark McGuire. Frank one. McGuire comes in with that 312 average. Nine home runs hit 39 last year. And behind Wakefield, 02. Contrary to what most people think, McGuire really doesn't have a big swing. He's taking a big swing here. But he's got a pretty short stroke. That's why he's able to lay out for a long period of time and still come back and hit well. A ball and two strikes. Tim Wakefield making his 10th start. And he strikes out McGuire to retire the side. We're headed into the second from Oakland. Canseco will lead off. No score. Sergei Fedorov and the Red Wings trail the series 3-1, to one, and they're coming home to narrow the gap. But Joe Sackick and the Avalanche have other plans as they look to close it out. 
The conference finals continue as the Red Wings take on the Avalanche tonight at 7.30. Seat number... Red Sox and the Athletics in Oakland. Get it into the second inning with no score. Congratulations. Red Sox went out one, two, three in the first, and Jose Canseco will lead off the top of the second inning here against Steve Wojciechowski. Leading off of Boston, number 33, Jose Canseco. There are a couple still, of Red Sox fans in there among the booze. Well, there's still some fans here who appreciate what Canseco did while playing here for the Oakland A's. As people remember he's the only member of the 40 home run, 40 stolen base club in the same season. And the first pitch from Wojciechowski, high ball one. Canseco was originally in the lineup to play the outfield. Kevin Kennedy had him in left field, but he's had, among other things, some back problems, and that flared up again. He had some problems throwing as a result of that. So he's the designated hitter. I really believe that Boston will not get on track and stay consistent offensively this year until they solve the problem of getting Kevin Mitchell in the lineup with Ken Seiko and Vaughn. And it was two and one. And in talking to some of the Red Sox players, they believe that Ken Seiko can play the outfield and that would leave Kevin Mitchell a chance to be the DH. And this is something I think is going to have to happen for Boston to reach its full potential this year because they're going to have to outscore teams. I mean, it's that simple. There is ball three. It's three and one. Well, originally they had Conseco to play the outfield today, and Mitchell, who's been bothered by some leg problems, he's had hamstring problems and his right side most recently, it's his left leg that's been bothering him. There's ball four. He was going to be in the lineup as the DH. But with Kenseiko moving into the DH role because of the leg problems, Mitchell couldn't play the outfield. Right. But it also throws a real kink in our lineup. Now Tim Naring has to hit fifth. Naring was going to lead off. You have a leadoff hitter hitting 350. That's what you want. You need players to get on base in front of Mo Vaughn, Valentin. Ken Seiko and, and Kevin Mitchell. That's a very good lineup if you start it that way. And Naring does not have great speed as a potential leadoff man, but his on-base percentage right. was 438 starting play today. And that's what you want. I mean, you need a guy to get on base for these guys. They can usually let him trot home. There's a strike. Naring, 29 years old, finally found himself healthy. Last year, played in 126 games. Put together a pretty good year. And the count is a ball and a strike. And there's some production right there at first base. Conseco and McGuire. And quite a run here in Oakland. just missed. Two balls and a strike. Nobody out. Wojciechowski is down. Behind in the count. Three balls and a strike. Whenever he has problems with his control, He's going to have, you know, be in trouble simply because he is not a power pitcher. He can't throw two and zero fastballs in the strike zone. Let's see what he does with Naring. Three and one. Nobody out. Canseco at first. Naring punches it through the right side for a base hit. Canseco will stop at second, and the Red Sox have their first two hitters aboard in the second inning. I was watching Ken Seiko. He was not running real well, so maybe that's, you know, he does have back problems because he was kind of, you know, tippy-toeing down to second base then. Good hitting there by Naring. He takes a fastball, goes the other way. Now watch Ken Seiko. See, he's really not stretching it out right there, and he kind of just slows it down rounding second base. He's, he, he looks like he's afraid to let it all go there. So the Red Sox have the first threat of the game. Two men on with nobody out in the second. 
And Bill Hasselman, who's doing the catching today, steps in. Breaking ball down and in. Ball one. Hasselman playing in the place of Mike Stanley. Stanley's done the biggest load of the catching for the Red Sox since coming over, signed as a free agent after spending the last few years in New York for the Yankees. second inning of this game. And he sends a fly ball toward right center. Herrera is there to make the catch. Canseco tags and is on his way to third. And he just does make it. You can see, Joe, I think your observation's right. He is not running very well. Well, and I hope he has a bad back because otherwise he should have slid. I mean, <laughs> the play was close enough that he should, have, he, he should have had to slide. Nice throw here by Herrera. Just a little bit off the money, but you can see Canseco did not want to slide. He just wanted to run well enough to get there, and he did make it, so I guess he, he timed it perfectly anyway. That sets up a first and third with one out. Here's Jose Malave. Just 24 years old, out of Venezuela. One out of six in the big leagues, and the pitch is a strike. Malave has shown some power. Hit over 20 home runs in the minor leagues last year at Pawtucket. 23 home runs there with a 270 average. Out in front, Rojakowski had him reaching. Two strikes the count. Rojakowski has given Oakland a measure of stability in that starting rotation and a rotation that otherwise is a bit suspect at times. Well, you're right. I mean, he has been the most consistent of their starters. I mean, all you have to do is look at their run average and you can tell that he has pitched very well. They've gotten some good starts from Johns and, and some of the others, but they just have not been as consistent. Ozerkowski. 25 years old. This one is too low. The ball and two strikes. There's the breakout for their starters. 581. The overall team ERA is 526. The ball, two strikes. into left center field. That ball is going to be off the fence. Extra bases. Canseco scores. Nearing being waved around. The throw is going to be high. He's in there safely. And in at second is Malave to put Boston out in front two to nothing. A double off the left center field fence. His first extra base hit and his first two runs batted in. One of the things that Wojciechowski has been able to do in his other starts is if he gets ahead of a hitter, he's been able to put them away. He was not able to put Malave away because he was just stayed on the ball, stayed on the ball, and that was a pretty good pitch. It was down, but he got out in front of it and hit it off the wall in the left center field. Good hitting there. Now here's Troy O'Leary. in a single and after the fly ball to right the two base hit by Malave 
Two to nothing, Boston. There's a strike. One ball, one strike. Important for Wojciechowski to throw a first pitch strike, and he has done that most of the time this year, about 61% of the time, Joe. And if you're a crafty left-hander as he is, This one lined into the left. Lavello will play it on one hop. Stopping at third, Malave. So it's another first and third setup. When you do not have an overpowering fastball, the reason you have to stay ahead of the hitters because they will help you. You can get them to chase some of your breaking balls out of the strike zone if you're ahead, but not when you're behind. It looked like a little slider that didn't do a lot. Stayed on the inside part of the plate. And O'Leary lined at the left field for a base hit. First and third with one out for the number nine hitter, Esteban Beltre. Beltre at second base now that Cordero's out of there. They're hoping for the best in the Will Cordero situation, but there's a possibility he may be lost for the year. There's a base hit into right field. Malave will score. Three to nothing, Boston, as O'Leary stops at second. Beltre picking up the run batted in. So the Red Sox, starting with that leadoff walk to Canseco, the Red Sox are building an inning. But again, they're taking the ball to right field, which is the proper way to do it. If you're a right-handed hitter, and a guy like Wojciechowski, who is the left-hander, tails the ball away, just go the other way with it. That's good hitting. Jim Rice, who is the hitting instructor, he used to do that quite often. Milt Kyler, check swing at a foul ball, strike one. From the Oakland perspective, the A's are hoping that they can get what has turned out to be the usual six innings or so out of Wojciechowski. They just finished that long road trip east. They started that trip in Boston, winning just one of four there. And in the last three games, they went through a stretch where they had a 26-inning stretch over three games, and the bullpen was in 21 of those 26 innings. And that's how they started a trip. When I talked to the hitting instructor Denny Walling and, and Art Howe, you know, they were they were afraid of this road trip the entire season. When you look at your schedule, you say that which road trip's going to be the most difficult. And obviously this was their most difficult road trip of the season. Plus they have to come home and play those same teams. So uh, this stretch, they said if they can keep their heads above water during this stretch, they'll be all right for the rest of the season. Off the plate in a little bit. The count is a ball and two strikes. The Red Sox with three runs home. Only one out in the second inning. Two men aboard. Milt Kyler at the plate. Down to third. Jambi scoops to second one. Over to first. Not in time to get Kyler. O'Leary goes to third as Beltre is forced at second base. Giambi to Gates. Nice play there by Giambi. He, he chose to come and get the ball. He didn't wait for it, which makes it a difficult play. That's the only way they had a chance of making a double play. See how he comes in, gets it on the short hop. Nice throw to second. Gates did not get the ball out of his glove as quickly as you'd like from second base, but he may not have had a chance with Kyler anyway because Kyler runs very well down the line. Good play by Giambi, though. As we mentioned, this is a good defensive ball club the Oakland A's have. They do not make a lot of sensational plays, but they make the routine plays. Over to first, and Kyler is back in there. The A's have committed the fewest errors of any team in the major leagues, and they lead the American League in double plays turn. When you look at the rest of the numbers that go with the team, ERA. There's a line drive base hit up the right side by Valentin. Another run is home as O'Leary crosses the plate. Kyler goes to third. Valentin drives in the run, and it's four to nothing. That's his 22nd run batted in this year. 
Well, again, good hitting by the Boston Red Sox. I don't think you can take anything away from Wojciechowski. They're just handling his pitches well. You see that pitches away, and, and Valentin goes the other way with it. I mean, that's, that's just good hitting. You have to give the hitters credit here. Not so much that Wojciechowski is making bad pitches. They are just handling them. So it's a four-run inning for the Red Sox, and they have Mo Vaughn due up here. Valentin driving in the latest run. Red Sox eight and a half back of New York to start the day in the American League's Eastern Division. Baltimore, Toronto, and then the Red Sox. Bob Cluck, the pitching coach for Oakland, is on his way to the mound. Carlos Reyes starts to throw in the bullpen. Meanwhile, Oakland four games under 500, seven and a half back of Texas, and that despite a three and seven road trip. And it's despite the fact that Texas has been playing very, very well. So again, that's what I was saying, talking about. They said if they can just keep their heads above water here during this stretch, then they'll look forward to the second half. And when you have a young ball club like Oakland, that's the key to your season. If you can just stay close or just keep your composure the first half of the season, you'll get a little bit more maturity out of the young pitchers, you get a little bit more maturity out of the young players, and at the end of the season, you have a chance of being a pretty good ball club. And to this point, Art Howe has them playing fundamentally sound, and that has kept them in a position to be respectable. Because when you look at their run production, they're 12th in the league in hitting, 11th in the league in on-base percentage, 12th in the league in ERA, 12th in runs total, it's the defense that has kept them in games. Here's Mo Vaughn. Valentin back in at first. Wojciechowski cuts for four runs here in the second inning. And he's here working to Vaughn. Hit into right field. Here comes Kyler. Valentin digging for third. He will make it. So, Joe, they batted around the Red Sox have against Wojciechowski and score another run as Vaughn drives in the run to make it five to nothing. Well, Wojciechowski is just, I mean, he's giving up base hits, but again, he's not making bad pitches. They're not up in the strike zone. Most of the pitches are down. But the hitters are just being aggressive and they're attacking them. Well, again, Oakland may be reluctant to go to the bullpen, Joe, because it's been so overused. Well, not only that, I mean, this is your best pitcher. This is one bad inning. A lot of times, if a guy has a bad inning, you know, a good pitcher, he can come back. You know, he can uh, always regroup and come back, and that's what you're hoping for. You're just trying to get him. Well, Art has decided now that he's not going to let him pitch to Canseco, and I can understand that because Canseco can bust the game wide open. So it turns out to be a reluctant move, but one he has to make here in the second inning with Oakland trailing five to nothing. Here comes the pitch. Take me out to the ball game. Okay. Take me out with the crowd. <laughs> Buy me some peanuts and some crack the jacks. I don't care if I never get back. Let me root, root, root for the home team. If they don't win, it's a shame. For it's one, two, three strikes you out at the old ball game. Uh. What a game. The Red Sox have struck for five runs in the second inning on the Oakland Athletics and left-hander Steve Wojciechowski. Wojciechowski gone after an inning in two thirds. This by far his poorest outing in terms of numbers this year. Five runs, six hits, two 40 pitches, one strikeout, and one walk. And that opened the second inning when he walked Jose Canseco. Now Carlos Reyes will take over. Reyes just recently moved to the bullpen. Reyes. It's very similar to Wojciechowski, except he's right-handed. He throws a variety of pitches, fastball, curveball, slider, change, and not overpowering. He's very similar to Wojciechowski in that he has to throw strikes. He has to stay ahead of the hitters so that he can get some help from the hitters in chasing the breaking balls and change up to go out of the strike zone. 
Well, here's Canseco to hit for the second time in the inning. The Red Sox will have sent 10 men to the plate. And Reyes misses ball one. Jukowski making his second start against Boston had a no decision the first time around and leaves trailing five to nothing this time. Reyes behind Canseco. You're right about the approach to pitching and the similarities between Reyes yes. and Wojciechowski. Reyes more or less relies on that off-speed pitch to survive. Back with a fastball there to pick up a strike, and it's two and one. The Red Sox have won three out of four games in the season series with Oakland so far, and to this point, they have outscored them 43 to 15. The count is three and one. Wakefield's sitting there. He's not like a power pitcher who needs to stay loose and throw hard. <laughs> he doesn't want to throw hard. He just got to flip it up there anyway. So long innings should not bother him like they would a guy that throws fastball, curveball, slider. And Canseco walks for the second time in the inning. So the bases are loaded with Nering two up. There's that season series breakout the Red Sox winning three out of four look at the Oakland ERA in the season series 884 well the Boston Red Sox obviously a very good offensive ball club and especially in Boston now they're loaded with Tim Nering at the plate Reyes picks up a strike Nering has singled and scored strike and has the jump on Tim Nary. Well that tells you how the Red Sox think about you know and, and their their approach to hitting Reyes. They're looking for all speed pitches and he threw in two fastballs to get ahead. But they had a good approach with Wojciechowski. They were going the other way the right handers were. And that's the reason they were as successful as they were. The two strike pitch. Nering hits it deep down the line and left. Is it fair or foul? That ball is foul. Nering making a bid for a grand slam, but pulled it foul down the left field line. But Reyes was trying to get this ball, I think, off the plate inside, and he didn't get it inside enough. Nering went down and got it. Now watch this pitch. It's supposed to be inside. You see the strike zone there. Actually, he threw it just about where the catcher's glove was set up. But Nering was not fooled. He went down and got it and just barely hooked it foul. So a two strike pitch again on its way. Blocked by Steinbach. Maybe it's time if you're the Oakland A's you start trying to make some bad pitches. <laughs> I mean the pitches that are down these Red Sox have been able to handle them. Maybe you need to throw some some upstairs. I mean if you think about it there has not been a high pitch called a ball in this entire ball game for the Oakland A's pitchers. They've been able to keep the ball down which is usually the secret to success. And a popper in the short right. Gates out there under this one backpedaling to finally retire the side. But the Red Sox have a big inning. They score five and we go into the bottom of the second five nothing Boston. 